there. Uh, Colts 41, Bills 15. Another, I mean, it's wild seeing the Cowboys score nine and the Bills score 15 points. Um, the Those two teams, I believe, as pointed out by our helpful research department, the number one scoring offense, the Cowboys was held to nine points. The number, one, number two scoring offense, Buffalo was held to 15 points. Or just, just wild to see uh, that sort of like situation unfold. Jonathan Taylor, 20 to one to win the MVP, he had 32 carries, 185 yards, five touchdowns, and set the franchise record for touchdowns in the game. Four rushing, one receiving, eight straight game with a rushing touchdown, second longest streak in Colts history. I'm going to assume that Edron James is above him on that list. Uh, and then now, most consecutive games with 100 plus scrimmage yards and a is it and a rush touchdown? Yes. Uh, Taylor is tied with LT and Lydell Mitchell for number one. LT, of course, in that magical 2006 season. Uh, it's also his second career game with a rush TD and receiving touchdown. He has five, 15 touchdowns, the most in the NFL. Are the Colts streaking their way to the playoffs, Wilson? Yeah. Uh, I think Breach mentioned them a second ago. And look, you can say, well, the, the three biggest rushing games prior to Sunday for Jonathan Taylor were against the Jaguars, against the Jets, against the Texans. So who gives a crap? This is against the Bills. And the Bills defense yeah. ain't no joke. In Buffalo, in crappy weather. So you knew they're going to lean on the running game. You knew Jonathan Taylor's going to run the ball. Quentin Nelson went out with a with a lower body injury. I think he may have banged up the uh, ankle that gave him uh, issues in the preseason. Doesn't matter. And I actually watched the first episode of In Season Hard Knocks with the Colts. Oh, yeah. How was it? Good. It was interesting. And the running backs coach was talking to Chris Ballard, the GM, talking about how blown away he was with how good Jonathan Taylor is. And he sees Jonathan Taylor every day for a year and a half now. So if he's blown away, I think we should all be blown away. And that was uh, just uh, brought to bear against a Bills team that does not look good on defense. And by the way, I, I don't know if you mentioned this, uh, a pass uh, reception touchdown too for Jonathan Taylor, so five total. And yeah. uh, good old uh, um, Josh Allen. I got some concerns about Josh Allen. Josh Allen doesn't look like last year's Josh Allen. And he's been sort of replacement level, and we haven't really talked about it. And if he's replacement level, this team is not a good football team. And they've had some – the last three weeks have been weird for a lot of good football teams. Um, but some teams have come out on top, and like the Patriots, for example, and some teams like the Titans and, and more recently the Bills. There's some issues. And as we said after Thursday night, if I'm Buffalo, I'm concerned about the Patriots. I'm way more concerned now than I was two days ago. Yeah. By the way, we're pulling up MVP odds. Two points on that. Uh, one, do we think Josh Allen at six to one carries any value? And then maybe no. more importantly, two, for my selfish purposes in a game we already talked about, Patrick Mahomes, eight to one. Hi. Right. I didn't actually bet it, but I told everyone to. I hope you did. And well, I mean, neither of those guys helped their cause today. It, the Bills game was weird because they were down 24 to seven at the half, even though they didn't punt. The entire first half, it was they're they're just kind of like falling all over themselves. I mean, the interception on their first possession, the Indianapolis immediately turns into a touchdown. So now you're down fourteen uh, nothing. Later in the first half, they fumbled it. The Colts immediately turn that into a touchdown. Now you're down twenty four seven, and then Tyler Bass off the upright on a fifty seven yard field goal to end the half and misses. So I mean, it's not like you can blame him for that, but it was just weird how everything kind of happened. The other thing about the Colts is that you remember how the Broncos started three and oh, and we're like, eh, they're probably not for real because of who they beat. That's how I felt about the Colts going into this game because they were five and five, but you look at their five wins. It was against uh, the Jets, the Texans, the Jacksonville and San Francisco. So like, and back when San Francisco was bad a few weeks ago before they figured out they need to run the ball in every play, uh, so you're talking about these wins that you just never got a good idea of how good the Colts could be. And then they come in here and just destroy Buffalo. Um, so, you know, you can say if the bills aren't as good as we thought, cause Josh Allen's playing replacement level. So then we, the Colts are still kind of an unknown, but any team that plays good defense and can run the ball can be good in January. And here's a fun fact for you guys. The Colts are six and zero this season when they rush for 125 yards or more, and they are zero and five, when they rush for under 125 yards. And by the way, we're not even talking about Carson Wentz because he was left for 20 for 106. Didn't have to do a whole bunch. And that's sort of the point. But the he defense... did make an amazing uh, 
like 12 yard run on a third and 10 where he should have been sacked. He had like three guys on him. He Houdini'd out of it. Uh, that was on a, a drive that stayed. He kept it alive for a touchdown. I looked up and I thought that was Josh Allen. Like that's how <laughs> incredible it was. And then I realized that the uniforms were switched. Did you guys hear that call? Yeah, you tweeted. You couldn't. You quit. Couldn't quit tweeting about it, Debo. Was that more? Uh, that was a good call. Was that the escape hatch call? Oh, he found the escape hatch. <laughs> How's my face? Show? <laughs> Fantastic. That's, that's a that's, that's a young Kevin Harlan. <laughs> he's the greatest. <laughs> a young um, Kevin Harlan. Uh, by the way, very important here. Quentin Nelson, uh, Frank Reich said his injury does not appear serious, so that is huge for their run huge. attack. Indeed, huge. Colts still have a tough schedule, though. I mean, you, they're at six wins. They still have to play the Buccaneers, the Patriots, the Cardinals. Those are three very tough games over their final six. Well, so I the Steelers, Colts, Browns, Raiders, and Broncos would all be in or tied to be in the playoffs in the NFC, and they are all out of the playoffs in the AFC. That's sad. Yes. Side note. The, the Bills have, over the last four games, enough of a couple red flags where you have to be worried. Sorry, dude, I didn't I skip to the... But yeah, I mean, the, the Colts, Tampa at Houston, you have to think that they get uh, to their week 14 bye sitting at 7-6, and six, right? I mean, that would be really surprising if, if they lost both of those. Or, I mean, maybe they split them the other way, but it'd, it'd be pretty surprising if they lost both, right? Right. So you figure, I mean, I'm going to pick the Patriots to beat them right now as it stands at the Cardinals is a tough matchup. And then they could, I, I would, I would probably pick them to go three and three the rest of the way. So the yeah. question is, does not, can they, one of two things, can they win? Can they steal one of those other games? And maybe it's the game against the Pats. Um, I feel like the game against the Buccaneers seems like the easier out of the, out of the Bucks, Patriots and Cardinals. You can't run against the Bucs though. I mean, yeah. you, before today, you couldn't run against the Bills. Right. Nah, you got to get the Bucs are like a, a, a straight up yeah. run. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Bills were giving up under 90 yards a game. Yeah. I, I would, I would, I wouldn't be surprised. You got to get 10 wins. So you, you're going to have to make some magic happen. But they, right. they've been red hot. And by the way, you could end up winning the division given the way that the team atop of the division is currently playing. That would be Thanks. unfortunate for my my financial stake in the Tennessee Titans. Well, and Wilson mentioned how bad Wentz or that we're not talking about because he didn't really do anything. But imagine when he does just do a little bit, you know, like so. If, imagine what if what if he doesn't do anything? Well, then what if he's they negative? need they need Jonathan Taylor to go off for 185 yards and four touchdowns every week if he doesn't do anything. But if he throws for 200 yards and goes 15 to 20 instead, that gives him a chance against a team like the Buccaneers. And the Buccaneers aren't playing that well. I mean, the Buccaneers are basically the NFC version of the Bills. Buccaneers have not won a game this month. Yeah, it's not like they're the a, a year ago. This team is. Hmm. You're, I mean, the Bills have lost. The Bills lost to the Titans going to the bye. Came out and I know they covered against Miami, but they definitely shouldn't have. They lose. Well, they the, won that game by five hundred points, didn't they? Not the game no, they no, it was twenty six eleven at, uh, versus Miami. You're thinking of the Jets, and they had a late garbage touchdown to, to cover. They they get they lose six. They give up. They score six points against the Jaguars and lose on the road. Oh boy. Blow out the Jets on the road, and then they get blown out at home against the Colts. Uh, you know, in their first home game of the month, in like almost a month. What a weird Jekyll and Hyde team this is. Their other loss, they lost to the the uh, the Steelers in Week One. I mean, like this is what a bizarre season. And their four wins going into that Tennessee loss are Miami, Washington, Houston, and then at Kansas City in a game that they like basically laid it all on the line for on Sunday night football to try and prove they could take down the chiefs. It's concerning. They're, they're at new England or excuse me at new Orleans on Thursday night and Thanksgiving night. Pat's at home at Tampa, Carolina at home at new England, Atlanta, the jets. I mean, they got probably three guaranteed wins left on the schedule, but I'm starting to sweat this over under that. I got at 10 and a half. Yeah, I was gonna. Uh, that's funny. If before you said that, when you said they had three guaranteed wins, I was about to say I think they get to ten. I think they're comfortably at ten, and then you throw out your ten and a half. I, that's they're gonna have to steal one. They're gonna have to not get swept by the Patriots, which is funny because two weeks ago, before that Jacksonville game, there was, we wouldn't even be talking about the possibility of New England sweeping Buffalo, and now it doesn't seem that crazy. And then you have Tampa there, and, and man, the Bills are uh, 
in a free fall. I think now, what you're saying. They, look, they go to New Orleans and smoke the Saints, and all of a sudden we're like, all right, you know, maybe they're back on track. You split with the Pats. So the key, you need to win on Thanksgiving. They're four and a half point favorites. Split with the Pats, beat the Panthers, Falcons, and Jets, and we get to that 11 wins. And Brinson catches out and uses that money to buy more Brinson Sucks hats to give away for the podcast. Absolutely. Which you can win if you hit the like button on like this podcast. Like. We're getting close to being able to give away a hat. Smash the like button. 